niet van deze kant. Ik moet de voor opnieuw. It's a great time to get the hiccups stilt. <laughs> Why is this shaggy thing that we're charging it? Hello? With your hiccups? Uh, and we are on. Volume down. Ooh, volume down. Uh, all ready to go, Gina. Mm. How are you guys, Madeline? Uh, Jackie, hi, Jackie. Close the door, Dills. I'm gonna have to. Can you think of the hole now and take the Jordan's hiccups? Don't worry, no children were harmed in the making of this show. Uh, Ian, Barry, how are we all doing, guys? There's a big guy coming in now. Uh, Hi lads, how's the fence looking? Oh, you should have seen, I should have taken a picture of Dill's when he came back in lads. Head to toe, there was more paint on Dylan than there was on the fence. Uh, and Sean is still moaning because he's just a teenager. Uh, sore hands I say from the painting guys, make sure you get well paid. Yeah, I'm gonna give them rent free for another two weeks in. I think that's fair rent, is it? Uh, Cause a lot of people tune in guys. Mike and Colin ready, how we doing guys? Hello, Kerry, hello, Maeve, Sinead, ready to do this family that's starving? Uh, it might take a few minutes, Maeve, so I hope you're not too starving. Um, or Sinead, sorry. Uh, hi, guys, James, Alien, and Killarney. How are we doing, guys? Forgot today was Wednesday. I am here now. Well, Madge, that is perfect. Madge is here now, so we can start. Okay, let's get rocking. Today, Dills, keep an eye out on that. What are we doing? Are you finished hiccuping? Uh-huh. Come into picture, they can't see it. Um, today we are making bolognese. And this, look, so I said it's the perfect bolognese. The perfect bolognese is whatever you want to throw into it, okay? And the reason why I'm showing you this again, kids, pay attention. When you go back to school and you go to college, this is going to be the greatest dish you will ever make because it is so simple. You can stick it into your freezer. You never need to worry about not eating. You'll have simple, great, fantastic, fresh food at your disposal. <laughs> Boom! That sound good? Does that sound like a good reason to make it? Yeah. Absolutely. So those who are really following the channel will see I made a big pot yesterday. I'm going to make a few dishes as to what you can do with your bolognese to turn it up. Ooh, I never knew we could do that with bolognese. You're smiling, Sean. What's the, what's so funny? Carol says, suck a lemon for the hiccups. Suck a lemon for the hiccups. Or else maybe, doosh, no children were harmed in the making of this. Okay, let's get going. So if you are paying attention, oh yeah, by the way, a good old school buddy of mine, James Gargan, got in touch to say, please say hello to his wife, Adele, Anna, Laura. She was only 13 on Monday. And they are making, they made the pizzas, I think, the other day. And Jamesy, who's seven, and is kindly staying out of the way playing Xbox, which is where you guys really want to be, hmm, as opposed to here. I mean, they can't see it, they can't see it. Uh, so a massive shout out to you guys. And also, uh, um, Sean Lamb. That's right, Sean, you. You're 11 tomorrow. You didn't know that, now you do. You're 11 tomorrow. So have a massive, fantastic, cool birthday tomorrow. And do you know what he did? He asked mom and dad, can we have meatballs for my birthday dinner. So they're making the meatballs that we made before. Sean, from me, Sean and Dills, have an absolute fantastic birthday tomorrow, okay? I see I have to write these things down because I have a head like an absolute sieve. Okay, everybody, here's what we're doing. Big pot, okay? Peel your onions, hopefully you've got all these done already. And also your garlic, kids, you get onto the garlic. Actually, that's what I can do. Dills, you can get peeling my garlic, please. Most of you will have seen, I didn't get the knife for you, Dills. Um, we did a what to get ready, so some of you will have this done already, so fantastic. For those of you who do have it ready, have your pot. We're putting in about a tablespoon of olive oil, give or take, butter dills. I need butter and I need my minced meat as well. Did I take that out? No. We're not very organized today, lads. The taskmaster, the real boss of the house has had us doing jobs all bloody day and we're all fed up lads, aren't we? Yeah. We're sick of doing jobs. So, butter for flavor, oil for heat, about that much butter, okay, into your big pot. I was actually going to use my duck fat that I have over there and I said, I might confuse you all. 
But if you have duck fat, if you have sunflower oil, if you have whatever, it doesn't really matter. Butter for flavor, oil for heat. Excellent, oil for heat. Uh, so we're just gonna peel and we're going with a fine chop. I wanna show you something here for everybody who's, I can't cut like you. My knives aren't as good as you. I don't have uh, the ability to do a fine dice. So here's what I'm going to show you, right? This is, oh my God, why am I doing it the other way all the other times? Watch this, right? An onion has naturally got its own layer. Shawnee, come in closer. You'll see the experts, they say, go down like this, again, come across like this, and then chop, chop, chop like that to make it nice and fine. Watch this, right? So you're not as good as me, so do it this way. Cut it down like this, cut it down like this, go straight through it, go straight through it, okay? Turn it sideways, hold it tight, and then slice all the way down, okay? But that looks huge. I don't want it that big. But guess what, guys? Guess what, guess what, guess what? I told you, an onion has many layers. So when the onion goes into the pot, look, it all comes out in a fine kind of dice. Anyway, okay? Not as perfectly thin, but it's just as good, okay? So do it that way if you don't know how to do it like this. You cut down half the way. I really need to do these onions beforehand because they really make me all well up. Dills, it's really because I'm just so emotional to be here in the kitchen with you. Okay, so we do it like this, and then you chop, and you get an even finer dice, okay? Practice with your knives, guys. It's good. Have you finished burping or hiccuping yet, right? No. Okay, how are we doing, Shawnee? You're in charge of a couple of comments there. I'm putting in two onions, by the way, because they're quite small. One red, one white. That's what I had nearest to me. I could have done two white, but I just want to show you. It doesn't matter what onions you use. Anything coming in? Anybody keeping up? Anybody behind already? Champ, you're in charge of comments. As in, that's you, Shawnee. Anytime you want to say um, something. Do you know, like, you know, you can, you know, Ronnie do is about six weeks, you know? Now, so how are we all getting on? I'm just chopping away my onion and I want you to understand that this is one of the easiest dishes in the world to do. And it's a brilliant dish for also throwing in Different if you have a half a jar of some sort of sauce stuck in the fridge from, say, like nachos or a half a jar of some sort of a relish that you're, I'm never gonna use that up. Bang it into the pot, it's perfect. Okay, so it looks like a lot of onions, looks like a lot of garlic, but we're actually making a pot of bolognese for about 20 people. That's what we're pretty much doing here. Now, I have no heat on yet, roll or anything, so I'm gonna throw that in, onions, Beautiful, Sean, you can show everybody at home what's in the pot. We'll do a few bits of the garlic. Get that out of the back. Crush the garlic, guys. You know what you do by now. Back of the knife, hopefully. Uh, let me know if this, this is anybody's first live cook-along. Is this your first time joining in with us? Let us know. Dills, how are we looking? Is the oil on low or medium? I don't have it on any heat at the moment. Sean, you're in charge of comments. Oh, the onions are killing me, lads. If you see any questions, Sean, will you please read them out? Mm -hmm. As in you, that was, Sean, that was yeah? The, that was the first question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's amazing how I just saw it. Yeah. Okay, crush your back of the garlic. How many cloves of garlic? I'm putting in about six, seven, or eight. Doesn't really matter. Now, we're going to top and tail our carrots. Uh, so I don't have it on the heat at the moment. I am going to throw it on onto pretty much uh, about a medium heat. And we can turn it up then after that. So top and tail all my carrots. And then we're going to peel them. And then we're going to... Go. So we're going... Everything is pretty much the same size, okay? We're doing everything as a kind of a fine dice. I think I was telling people about the size of a Smarty. Or something like that. So peel all our carrots. It's Trisha's first time. Trisha, uh, brilliant. Steve, Rosie, Andrew, Patsy, and Deirdre. All your first time. Well, welcome to the party, guys. If you go back on the page, you'll see a load of videos that Dills isn't hiccuping in. Uh, we've done, I don't know, many of these cook-alongs we've done. I think between live cook-alongs and other stuff I put in, we must have done at least 20 by now. And uh, yeah, so have a look. There's pizzas, there's meatballs, there's chicken curry. There's, what else have we done? That's, um, prawns, have you something with prawns? Prawn risotto. Prawn risotto, yeah, no man, there's. So we're just peeling everything. Kids, you guys should be doing this. Hopefully you're a little bit faster than what Dills is doing. 
Just take your time, buddy. Like, there's nobody watching. How are we doing in our comments there? Uh, so peel all your carrots and lads, it doesn't matter. This is what I want you to learn about the cooking, especially when that's here on the first time. It doesn't matter really what sequence you put these into the pan at the same time. Okay, so if you go, oh no, I'm actually doing my mushrooms now. That's fine, it's grand, don't worry about it. They're all pretty much going into the pan, give or take around the same time. Nigella said, first time, can I blitz the veg so the kids don't see them? Magella, get your kids up to the screen quickly. And I'm gonna tell you kids, do not be afraid of eating fruit oh. or ah. Poor network connection, it says. Well, I turned off the Wi-Fi, so it might be. The weather here is crap, lads, and our network here is crap, so hopefully, is it back on? Is it still on? Oh, we're frozen. Wow. Might go we, we could go back in a sec. Ah, it'll come back in a second. Hang on a second now, I need to finish that. Give it one second, guys. Sorry, our coverage here is crap today, here, guys. Well, no, Are we still all right? We, we, should be back. we should be back now. We should be back. Uh, so I'm just finishing off my garlic. I think the screen froze there for a second, guys. I'm just crushing my garlic. Did I see Salvatore? Salut, salo. Como ça va bien? My good friend Salvatore in Switzerland. Uh, I hope you're doing well, Toto. So now, so we've just crushed our garlic and we have just put in um, our onions. Butter and oil, no heat, yes. Okay, now, Magella, sorry, I knew I was saying something to you. Do not be afraid, kids, get your kids to the screen. Trust me, when you cook and you help mom or dad in the kitchen, you'd be amazed how much better vegetables taste when it's you who cooks them, okay? So, isn't that right? Yeah. Okay, good answer, by the way. So, it's, kids, I want you peeling the carrots or chopping the onions or doing something, chuck them all into the pot. When you cook them, they taste absolutely amazing. Can you blitz them? Yes is the answer. But I wouldn't, because it kind of changes the whole texture and all that kind of stuff. So don't be afraid to sh get the kids. Here lads, just get stuck in. You help me cook and you season the way I season. Trust me, fruit and veg taste absolutely amazing. So. We're gonna do the same with our carrots. Get close in there, Shawnee, so they can all see them. Salut, frère. Where is he? Salut, frère. Salut, frère. As in, hello, brother. We are very good friends, myself and Salvatore. Salvatore went through a, a tough battle around Christmas time, and he's out the other side. So it's great that he's here. So look, we're going about the size of a smarty, okay? Oh my God, I can't put them like that. It doesn't matter if they're a little bit bigger. It might just take a little longer to cook, but that's the kind of size we're looking for all the veg. Okay. And then he says, too freaky and <laughs> <laughs> Too what? I don't know. Right, tu fais uh, que manger. Uh, tu fais que manger? Um, what's he saying there? You're doing what to eat? Sean, you're the guy studying French. It's been a long time since I've spoken French. Something make, I don't know. Uh, what are you making to eat or something like that? Oh. Bolognese. <laughs> Bolognese. So, we're just chopping up like so, guys. And we're gonna throw this onto the pan now in a second, or throw it onto the heat now in a second. So we're just getting all our carrots. Quick recap, what have we got in our pot? We've got about two medium onions, or one big onion, whichever. Remember, I've got, what have I got? I have about two pounds of beef, minced beef there. So we're making enough bolognese for about 20 portions, at least. So that's why I'm putting in as much and if you've only put in half the amount, that's fine. When you see why I'm doing this, I guarantee you next time you'll be putting in the same amount of measures. Is everybody all right? Everybody keeping up? Paul asks, how many carrots? How many carrots? What did I have? About four or five. Um, but again, if you only have three, that's fine. If you have six, bang them all in. We don't worry about measurements at all. Whoa. Now, show them inside the pot there, Shirley. I'm gonna do my last two carrots. That's what <laughs> Lee says. Good translation, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 I know. Well, you see, I was kind of half concentrating on my carrot, and then the thing went off the page, so I didn't really get to see it all. But uh, it's okay. You're not here to learn French from us. Although you never know. You never, never know. So, I didn't prepare any of my veg, just so everybody can keep up. I know a lot of you will have this done already, uh, just to stay ahead of the whole posse, which is great. Now, so there we go. Dicey, dicey, dicey. Dicey O'Reilly does, you know? Oh. Nah, me neither. Okay, so 
in with our carrots. Now watch what we're gonna do now, guys. We're gonna season now. Did you just sit there doing nothing? Like, there's no need to pick up a few carrots or any of that kind of stuff. I don't need my thing and I don't need that. Get rid of it. So we're going to season now. So what do we got in there? Shawnee, show them all. Uh, we have onions, garlic, and carrots. Now look at the amount of salt I'm putting in. Most of you are having heart attacks, right? Don't forget, that's for about 20 portions of bolognese. Dill's 46 twists of the black pepper. We want to put in loads of oregano, mixed herbs, Italian seasoning, whatever you have. Some smart ass said, if he was a chef, he should be using fresh herbs. Well, good luck to you if you can find fresh herbs at the moment. That's why I use dried herbs, because you can get them everywhere. And I went looking for his cooking videos and I couldn't see them. So I think I'll stick with my stuff. So about a half a thing, there's loads, don't forget guys, we're cooking for 20 portions here. If you've only got half the amount of mince, as in like maybe say like, you know, half a kilo of mince, just drop your portions by half, okay? But don't get, I know there's a lot of new people here, don't get too obsessed with measurements in cooking. I want you to go by taste and touch and you can move and kind of taste it as you go along. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good, okay? So I have a little bit of Cajun seasoning. I love that, I'm putting into loads of stuff. And I'm putting in maybe about a tablespoon or so into that. And I have a little bit of smoked paprika. I don't have it, don't worry about it, okay? If you have it, great. You might like to throw a few bits of seasoning as to what you like. And now we can get the ball rolling. So I'm gonna throw it over here. Shall come over here for a sec? So I'm turning on, my hob goes up to about six. I'm turning it on to about four and a half. You do not need to panic. You do not need to think about it. You don't need to worry about it. Forget about it, okay? That's fine over there. And we can get chopping up the rest of our stuff. Lee says that was only 43 um, cracks in the pepper. I, I told you, I told you somebody you would watch. I told you, how many were you supposed to do? 47. Yeah, and Lee said you did 46. 46, it was actually. Was it? Yeah, you see? So, celery. Now, pay attention. I absolutely hate celery. It's disgusting. Okay, can't stand it. But when you cook it in with this kind of stuff, it loses that horrible taste. No, trust me. Well, you've been eating it for but years. Why are you putting it in? Because, like, did you hear what I said? You only listen to I hate celery. You you're like headline newspaper stuff. You didn't listen to the rest of it. Because when you cook it down with all the other stuff, it loses that sharpness taste of celery and it just goes really well with everything else. That's why I throw it in, because it's good. And another reason, it bulks up the pot. So if you want to say, as I said the other day, the best bolognese is used with the best quality mince that you can afford, but maybe you turn around and go, do you know what? Uh, I don't have the tenor for all that mince today. So go with half the mince and bulk up in your veg. Throw in a few lentils. Cheaper way of bulking up the whole dish which is great. So again, celery, same size. Have you got your pots on guys, on medium? It's not on red hot because we don't want to be thinking about it and worrying about it. So we don't even need to stir it at the moment. Don't even give it a second thought. So I'm putting in, what am I putting in? About four or five sticks of celery. I only have two, perfect. I don't have any, perfect. I have seven, bang them all in. Are the mushrooms gone in? No, not yet. Here they are, look. Actually, dills, perfect. Thank you very much for that. Quarter the mushrooms, now hang on a second, right? So watch this, I'm gonna show you how to do one. Pay attention. Okay, so if the stalk, again, use your brains, guys, okay? So just cut off the stalk a little bit like so. Cut it in half, and go, that's a slightly bigger one, so I'll cut that bit into maybe four, okay? So that's the size portion of mushroom. Don't get too upset or caught up in the exact shape of it. This is cooking, not baking. So don't give it too much talk. Why are you putting, why are you putting those stalks on? Ah. But you know, I, ju I just told you what to do. Look, one, two, three. You don't need to pull it. See, it's harder, it falls apart. Stop, I'm gonna show you one more. Look, you made a mess of three of them. You did make a mess because you weren't paying attention. Watch, mushroom, you watching? I'm over here, right? One, two, I know you're getting all caught up with all your fans and hey Dills, how are you? You're looking great today. Okay, one, two, three. Kids, you should be on mushroom duty. One, two, three. Four, okay, perfect. Can you manage that? Can you get them all in the dish without dropping them? Darren said he put the celery in with the first bits. That's perfect, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I tell Actually, you what I would three do. Three people have done that already. That's perfect guys, you don't need to worry about that. I tell you what I would have done, and that's what I said to you, don't worry about the sequence. If I was making this on my own, 
at home like I did with the other stuff. I just prepared everything first and then I just threw it all in the pot at the exact same time. So it doesn't really matter. I just want to kind of get the ball rolling. So don't worry about it at all. There's a method to my madness and I shall tell you all now in a second. So dicey, dicey, dicey. And it's simple little things like I'm about to show you that make a huge difference in the... Are you still hiccuping? I know. Jesus oh, no. Christ. Okay, I'm telling you, send in the emails, lads. We're always looking for new staff here. We always like to upgrade, you know, get rid of one that's not so good and bring in a new guy. Grania asks there, uh, did you put the lid on the pot? No. And Helen asks there water in the pot? There's nothing, no, just what I threw in. No lid, no water. Um, if we teach you nothing else, where's my little cleaner? If we teach you nothing else in this, right, I want you to completely relax when you're cooking. There are zero rules in cooking. Baking, plenty of rules. In cooking, there are no rules. So if I put the lid on, made no difference. If I leave the lid off, no difference. Okay, so don't put in, all I've got is I have no liquid. I've just got my veg and my seasoning in there so far. And I'm gonna tell you why in one second. So I'm throwing in my celery, like so. And now I'm gonna, I have a courgette, so I'm throwing in a courgette as well, okay? Top and tail, Monsieur Courgette. And there are people going, my kids would never eat a courgette. I guarantee you, if they cook this with you, you will be amazed what they will eat. Did anybody try my experiment with the fruit? Was that yesterday we did that? Yeah. Yeah, yesterday that we did that. We, I showed guys how to prepare stuff. So the courgette guys, it's the exact same dice, okay? You can even make the courgette a little bit bigger because it cooks a little slower, but don't worry about it, okay? It's nothing. Listen. Can you hear that? I can hear the pan talking to me. Come over here, Shani. And we have now got, you can listen to that sizzle. You know what it is, Dills. It's time for the, it's the sizzle dance. Woohoo! Okay. This is where people panic. Oh my God, it's burning. It's not burning, it's sizzling. You take your time, one sec. And uh, that's all, that's all. So just relax, relax, relax. You can leave that go away happy for about 10 minutes. Nothing's gonna happen to it. Um, Dills, you keep going there, yeah? Where's my other knife? Stay there we are, Trini. So we're gonna throw in the veg here now as well. And we're gonna give it a stir. I'm just helping Dills along there. He's on a go slow. He's all tired after his hard work of doing the fence today, aren't you? Yeah. Poor old Dills. Child labour. Child labour. Yeah. Where would you get it? Huh? You're lucky. So chop up. So I'm just adding my courgette and my mushroom. Shawnee, everyone all right? I tried the fruit and Gronia and Anna have all the... Was that all the pine pineapple gone? Yeah. I love it. You see? Was I right? Anybody who missed that, we did a fruit video yesterday. How to get kids to eat more fruit. Trust me, it works. And the reason as to how you get kids to eat more fruit is get it prepared, go back and check on the page, get it prepared, peeled, diced up, in the fridge, and they go in and they pick away in it straight away. Okay. Oh, we're all doing good. We're about to take it to the next level now, okay? How are we doing? Excellent. This is my courgette and my mushrooms. Would you go for a walk or do something, get rid of those bloody hiccups? Shawnee, over here. Okay, so I'm throwing in everything. Fire that one piece of mushroom that just fell out. Whoa, five second rule. Now we've seasoned everything. Just come back a little bit, Johnny, yeah? We've seasoned everything, okay? And now this is the crucial part. You want that to pretty much drop in volume by at least 30%. Don't go, oh my God, it's a 30%, get out the ruler. Just like look at it and you'll see it drop down as the mushrooms cook down, as the carrots sweat down, as the onions sweat down. This technique means that we're caramelizing all the veg inside. So we're getting all the natural sugars out. So it becomes naturally sweeter inside. And it's a huge step into making your bolognese, okay? That's a big, big problem, right? That people kind of panic and say, oh, I'll throw in my mince now or I'll throw in this. Don't, let that sweat away. So I can't remember who asked me, did I put in any water? But mushrooms are about 90% water. So as they cook along, they're gonna start releasing their water. You want to evaporate that. 
so that it concentrates in flavor, okay? So let that cook away. As I said, I have my, I have my pot. It goes up to six. I have it on about four and a half, five. Avian asks, uh, what was the third seasoning? Mixed herbs, paprika, and what, what else? Uh, Cajun seasoning. Cajun seasoning, yeah. And uh, Mary said, you put the stalks in, all the mushrooms in. Yeah, absolutely. Chuck them in. Uh, now, while that's going to take four or five minutes, I want to show you a cool thing that we're going to do. All right? So, over here, Shani. There's a lot of walking around in this one. Anybody who did the fierce fancy apple tart or pear tart will have seen this stage roll out a bit of puff pastry. Okay? Pretty much the same thickness as your fierce fancy apple tart. Okay? And here's why I'm telling you about not to panic. That's only on about three quarters of the heat. That will not burn. Okay? It will not burn. Just keep an ear out. Okay? And stir it. Get the kids every two minutes. Actually, every two minutes and seven seconds, that's a joke. So just every two minutes, give it a little stir, okay? And you can see already the way it's come down in volume, okay? So look at that. Perfect. Stirry, stirry, stir. It's crucial. Don't skip this part. You could throw everything into the pot at the same time and bubble, bubble away. But trust me, this makes such a difference. Anyway, back to our puff pastry, okay? Our fierce fancy apple tart. Remember we rolled out our puff pastry? A little plate, a little plate, perfect though. Take that away, here's our little plate, beautiful. And we have one fantastic round piece of pastry. Back over here, Shani, because it's a much better view over here. <coughs> now, you stay there, champ, don't worry, I'm only walking around. Yesterday, we were having dinner, and all of a sudden, eagle eye dills, so dolphins out in the water, <coughs> so we legged it and we lost half our spuds as you can see. But we waste absolutely nothing, sure we don't do it? Oh. It was well worth it to go out and see the dolphins, wasn't it? Yeah. So here's what I want you to do guys, actually I'm going to get a small little dish. So this is one of the ideas, this is, we're just waiting on that stuff to come down. This is one of the ideas you can do with this bolognese next week, because I'm going to show you why we've made so much Today. You have said, should we have mixed the herbs and other seasonings already? Yeah, throw them into the pan now. So, okay, so I have, I'm going to keep, I'm only keeping this bit, right? So I have enough for one portion of mince there, right? This is the stuff I made yesterday. And we're going to make what's known as, ta-da, a Cornish pasty. I need my knife, where did I put my knife? Okay, so, these potatoes, Dill's going to the fridge, you'll see a glass with egg wash. These potatoes are not perfect because we went dolphin searching last night instead. Well, find the one glass that's in the fridge. So I'm just peeling them. So this is what I always tell you. Cook extra spuds, cook extra pasta, cook extra veg, extra rice, all that kind of stuff. Because it's so much easier to Look, this is going to take us a few minutes, so we've just taken a little piece of our bolognese out of the freezer this morning. It's now ready when we come home from work. We add in a couple of uh, spuds, and these certainly are well cooked, but it's perfect. A couple of spuds, look at that, just cut them to kind of bite size. Beautiful, I think that's enough actually. And now, we clean up as we go along later, quick wash of the hands. Get that nice little stir deals without kind of breaking up the spuds too much. Shawnee, back to me for one sec. We're gonna give the pot another stir. Don't forget to stir the pot, guys. Now look, there's nothing burning. And that's because the mushrooms, the onions, all the veg is releasing its natural juices and caramelizing. So nothing burning, nothing sticking. Mine's burning, mine's turned to shite. Mine's on whatever the hell. You possibly have it too high or also you possibly don't have a good quality pot, okay? And that's what I always say. Don't waste money on silly gadgets. Good pots and pans, good ingredients. That's what's important in cooking. Now, so we have now gone with our little round circle of puff pastry. Uh, can I use shortcuts? Yes. Can I use phyllo? Yes. Not as good, but yes, you can. You can use whatever you want. 
Okay, we get our bolognese that we took out of the freezer from last night or this morning that we've mixed up with a few spuds. That's cold, by the way. And we put it in. And we put it in. And we put it in. There'll be grannies and granddads out there going, oh my God, I love me a good Cornish pasty, I do. How was that? Not very good, is it? You don't see these around this often. They are absolutely gorgeous. Pick up your pastry, foldy, foldy, foldies, and then tuck it down and get it nice and tight, like so. Bring it into the middle of your tray. And don't worry about how do we crumb it, whatever, just, and don't worry if any of it comes out. It doesn't really matter. Just get it all nice and lovely, jubbly, lovely. Sinead says it smells good so far. Brilliant. And you see, look, nobody's panicking. That's still not burning. I'm, like, we're not, oh my God, I need to get out there quick. Nothing. So how easy with this? This is just idea number one as to what to do with our bolognese. Okay? So, we took it out of the freezer last night or this morning. We came home from work. We added in a couple of extra spuds that we'd already cooked before. We chewed into a little bit of pastry. That took two minutes to make. And I'm going to bang that in the oven now. Maybe a little bit of salt on top. Look at that, and maybe a crack of the black pepper. Idea number one for our first dish as to what, why we're making so much bolognese. In we go to the oven, that's gonna take about 20 minutes. All right, so, now, look at this. Okay, this should smell like somebody who was it made the said smells fantastic already. So look, that has dropped so much in volume already. Now, stay we are, Shani, but look at me over here. We're gonna add in our tomato puree, okay? So here's what I want you to think, right? So that was the full tub. So I have about three quarters of the tub. If I had half, that's what I'd put in. If I had a quarter, I'd have bought a new one. So I'm putting in about a half to three quarters of the tube of tomato puree, okay? Don't get upset, don't get too bogged down with measurements. A full tube is too much. A quarter of a tube isn't enough. Anywhere in between is pretty much spot on. Does that sound good, Dills? Yep. Okay, perfect though. Well, oh, the Cornish pasty? How simple was it? How simple was it? Mix this in, kids. You see your tomato puree? Come up a little higher, Shoney, so I can get a good view of it. So mix that in now to your veg. And trust me, guys, this stage is crucial. What we've just after doing there is absolutely, we've sweated off. That's why you're getting the amazing smells because we've sweated off all the veg together. Beautiful. Now, we're gonna give that one second and show you keep looking at the pot and I'm gonna do a little bit of a clean up because I hate messes. Okay, so we've done dish number one. We have got our, what did I say we made, Dilt? Our Cornish pasty is on the go. I'm going to show you three different dishes plus the big pot of bolognese. I don't need that deal, put that into the fridge. Okay, Shani, back over to me. Now, of course you can just pick up your mince and throw it into the pot. But I want you thinking, the exact same concept of what we've just after doing. We want to caramelize the mince a little bit because that gives it just a better flavor again into the bolognese. So that's what I want you thinking of doing. So we're just gonna turn on our pot or our pan there and we're gonna start getting it nice and hot. I'm gonna get my second dish ready. I'm gonna heat up a tiny little bit of bolognese from last night. Where's my spoon -o? And all I'm doing here is I'm just reheating. Try to come over here for a sec. Look into that. A small pot of last night's bolognese, right? So again, that was in the freezer for the last two months. I just remembered I had it. I took it out last night. Here we go, that's dinner tonight because I couldn't be arsed cooking. Now, look, here we go. So here's the difference now with our tomato puree. Once that's gone in, guys, tomato puree can burn, okay? So you need to be careful. So we've stirred that in for about a minute. Here comes the part of the night you have all been waiting for. Stay there, Shani. Our red wine, okay? How much am I put? I don't have red wine, you never told me red wine. About that, two glasses is what I'm putting in, okay? I only have a glass and a half left in the bottle. Perfect. So that's, what am I put in there? 
Not even two glasses. Maybe a glass and a half is what I've put in there. Then he says, mine looks way too That's fine, Mandy, we're only half. That's like coming. Mandy, if I was, that's like what my wife would say. If I was coming in and painting a wall and she came in halfway through it, she'd go, Jeez, you're not finished yet. I'd go, I know, but why does that bit still look white? And we're looking, I just haven't finished. So it looks tomatoey because we haven't finished yet. Trust me. Okay, so watch. Our red wine has gone in there now. Mix it, mixy, mixy. And now we can forget about that all together again. So here in our pot, we're only just reheating it a little bit. Nice and slowly. Always when you're reheating food, like a bolognese, a stew, even porridge, always heat it slowly so it doesn't burn. Now, this is real old school Kerry stuff here now. You get the bolognese in a bag of, your, your mince in a bag. Throw straight in. I have no fat, I have no oil, I have nothing in that pan. Why? Because mince is fatty enough, so I don't need any fat in it. Mary said it. I'm using pork. Pork, beautiful. No, pork. Pork, oh, Mary's on to Mary Ran. She said she had a bit of pork left. Don't worry about this pan. See it smoking, that's perfect. Mary was saying, will I throw the pork in or will I drink the pork? I said drink it, but she's obviously chucking it in. If you are using pork, at least half the quantity. It's much stronger. You don't need that. And maybe top it up with a bit of water. So look what we've done here, guys. We've put in... Geraldine says she doesn't have any wine. So we're, water. We're going to throw in a beef stock cube. Actually, here, look, Mary, just so you can see. I'm going to throw in a beef stock cube now. Over here, Charlie. Okay, so I'm throwing in my stock cube, Mary, now. So instead of wine, you throw in water. Okay, I'm going to throw in maybe a bit of water. We'll see how it goes. Now watch this. You see the way that's bubbling really fast? So I don't like that. So I want to turn that down just a little bit. Okay, so I want to just simmer it away. So I'm going down to about three and a half, and that's fine. Bills, what is the most important thing in cooking? Seasoning. Seasoning. We've seasoned that, we haven't seasoned this. So I'm now putting in a little bit of salt into my mince, and a little bit of pepper. There's plenty of herbs and Cajun seasoning in the other stuff, but I just put salt and pepper into this. And I have, as I said, two pounds of mince, give or take, so I'm gonna seal it off twice. I don't wanna throw in, I don't wanna throw in all the mince into the pan because it'll just start stewing straight away, okay? And we want to get it, so leave it there for a sec. So you just go down like that just to break it up. Just to break it up, guys, and to form a little bit of a crust on it. Now, simple. What are we doing, Bills? I tell you what we can do now, guys, because we're pretty much, your wine should have reduced by about 20% or so. So let's go in. With our tins of tomatoes. What's the story, Shani? I know when Shani's got something funny to say. What is it? Oh, it must be funny. Now, okay, so two tins of tomatoes for what I'm using, okay? So in we go with the tomatoes. And we still haven't even thrown in our mince yet, guys. Two tins of tomatoes. Show me, find that comment so I can see. I know. Okay, now. So look, I always just rinse out my tin of tomatoes. So I'm putting about a mouthful of red wine back in there. That's a big mouthful, yes. Now, Shani, concentrate, stop being a twat, Shani. Okay, so I'm just rinsing, rinsing out my can, throwing it in here. So we've got a clean can, rinsey, rinsey, rinseys. And then we'll slow down so that everybody's caught up and do a quick recap. That's my two cans cleaned out. Now, in we go, beautiful. And we still haven't added in our mince into it yet. Okay, fantastic. Beautiful, get my little pot here, a little stir as well. If you don't wanna heat that up in a pot, you could bang it straight into a microwave. How are we doing? So we're just pretty much sealing that off and it's just to kind of get a little bit caramelized. In the ideal world, I'd leave it for another minute, but I have another piece to put in. Maybe said, was it a large or a small glass of wine? That, that, that I put in? Yeah. I think I put in about a glass and a half, but again, don't get caught up on the measurements. I put in about a glass and a half into the pot and then I use a better mouthful to clean out the old tins. Mary said, can't put 
him as it reminds me of Pavement Pizza. Caveman Pizza? Pavement. Oh, Pavement Pizza. Okay, well, I guess you're having bolognese with no carrots, oh. Uh, now, Shawnee, watch the pan get in there close. Now, perfect, perfect, perfect. Add that into your pan now. Even if you only seal it off for 30 seconds, it adds to the flavor. Samantha said, is there enough in one tin? If you only have one tin, yes. If you're using, so what I want you to do, Samantha, is I want you to look into the pot. I'm just gonna heat that up again. No butter, no oil, no nothing. And, and I want you to kind of judge the consistency of what's in it. Don't be afraid if it's a little bit liquidy because, Johnny, come over here, I'm just gonna stir this in. Okay, so we're just gonna stir that in now. Okay, we've got more to go in. Another same amount of beef to go in there again. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now, I'm gonna throw in my second bit of beef so I can clean up a bit of a mess here. That's smoking away, so be careful if you're doing it like this. Okay, straight in. Gills. Get rid of all the blood first time to sink. And uh, so yeah, look at the consistency of your pot, okay? And if it looks really dry, then add in that second tin of tomatoes. I've used two tins of tomatoes for two pounds of mint. So I need the two, the two tins of it. You mightn't. If you follow pretty much what I've done, I think you probably will. If you've got two pounds of, of beef, I probably actually have about three pounds of beef in there, to be honest with you. Uh, I bought half a cow. That's the great thing about living down the country. I got half a cow of one of my buddies, Rotch, and uh, we got the butcher, minced up all the bits, whatever, the bags. I didn't even weigh them. About a, you know me now, I don't really weigh anything in cooking anyway. Remember, we haven't seasoned that. So now, season, season, season. That needs a bit more. Season, season, season. Dills, uh, 29 twists. And remember, Lee is watching. <laughs> now, clean as you go along, guys. Clean as you go along. Save so much hassle. How are you all doing, people? Are you all keeping up? How's everybody's pot looking? Let us know, guys. Who do we normally have tuning in? Ian, are you making this? Mr. Gargan, are you following through as well? I hope James, he's still playing his Xbox. Now, Shawnee, come over here. We do a quick stir of our pot again. So stirry, stirry, stirry. I put in my beef stock cube already, guys. If you see any big lumps of mints, just break them down anyway. Just break them down. Look at that. A massive pot of bolognese. And it's so simple. We season that. You put in the pepper? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Oh, nice. Clean, clean, clean as we go along. Samantha said Woodchester sauce. Oh, yes. If you have it, bang it in. Actually, so the one I made last night, Samantha, fantastic question. You are gold star student of the day. So yesterday when I made my bolognese, uh, my wife is, makes a mean, uh, what did she make lads? Fajitas, is that not fajitas? What did she make, chicken what? Chicken fajitas. Fa chicken fajitas, yeah. And there was half a jar of the sauce that was left and I hate little bits and pieces being left. So I got half of that and I threw it in. Uh, I threw in a little bit of my bacon jam that was sent down to me. Uh, and I threw in, it was about a little bit of Worcestershire sauce or soy sauce. It's a, that's what I love about bolognese. It's a brilliant way to use up stuff that you have in your pots. Uh, I, I have one leak, what do I do? Chuck that leak in. Oh, I had an aubergine, throw that in. I have like half a bag of frozen peas, throw it in, okay? That's the beauty of bolognese. It's a brilliant way to use up stuff. How are we getting on, Dales? Okay. Any other questions? How are we doing, guys? Let me know. How do you think venison mints would be fantastic, Sharon? Absolutely, but you need there's no, I don't like the fat on venison, it's very bitter. So if you were using venison, I'd put in about 20% pork belly mince, or a kind of good fatty pork, and mix that in with it too, just to get the flavor out of it. But venison would be beautiful. Looks great, smells even better. Going really well, I love this, Les. let me know. Up to date with you, good man, Ian. And the Heineken one alone. Grab another one, Ian. That's the week's dinner sorted. Sandra, 
This is the month's dinner sorted. That's why we're doing this. This is the method to, this is the reason why I want you doing this. Because we're going to freeze most of this at the end of the night. And in three days time, you take out a piece and you make a Cornish pasty. In three days time after that, you take out another thing of mince. And we're going to show you something simple, really simple. You're going to go, I can't believe it's that. I told you it's a game changer. I told you this would change your lives. I told you this would make everything so much easier. Always cook more than you need. Because that way you only have to cook once or twice a week. Miguel said keep squeezing. Keep squeezing? Freezing. Oh, keep freezing. Yeah. Oh, the screen? Yeah. Like, uh, how's that looking? How's it looking? I, I'm certain the coverage today has been appalling as I hope you can see what we're doing. Um, but hopefully... Now, look at this. I'm going to throw this one in away. That's fine. I know it's a little bit red there, but it obviously cooks out in the pot. Now, turn off power for one sec. Shoni, follow me over here. And in we go. So that I now have pretty much everything in my pot. I have all my uh, veg, I've got all my uh, meat, pretty much everything. Keep looking at the pot there. Dizzy, over your hand, give it a good old stir in. And rest when you put in the peas. The peas, you can throw in peas now if you want, or you don't have that in peas. And I put free peas and things. Do you know what I should have done? I actually should have thrown them into the uh, into my cottage pie. Yeah, that would have been nice. So I guess I guess I'm going with no peas tonight. I could get them out of the freezer. Throw them in now if you have them. Now, beautiful. How's my other pot there? Come back there, Shani. How's this one looking warm enough? Look at this. Absolutely beautiful. Give me a look there, goosey goosey. Okay. And now everything is calmed down. We're not frying anything. We're not bubbling anything. We're not doing anything. We're just gonna mix it all up. Now, here, what am I gonna do? I'm coming over here, add that in. Oh yeah, dish number two. Dish number two. What else can I do with this stuff? Like, I mean, why is he telling us to make so much bloody bolognese? We came home, we took it out of the freezer last night. I'm gonna look for tea towel. I really don't want to cook tonight because I know I've got a tough day in work. I know the kids are playing sport till six o'clock. It's going to be an absolute pain. I don't want to cook. I thought, oh yeah, take the bottom out of the freezer in the morning. That's defrosted by night time. You, it's heated up really slowly like I just did there. Or it's whacked into the microwave. And here's what I'm going to do to make my life really, really easy. I'm going to just wrap a spot in tin foil. And I'm going to bake it. That's all I've done. Perfect. Jeez, you swear I did this stuff before. Come here, look at my Cornish pasty, everybody. Look at this for a piece of beauty. Look at that, turn it over. Turn it over so we get a brown the other side. Look at that, look at that. Oh my God, it took us two minutes to make it. It's still about seven or eight minutes away. Dills, we need to come up. What was the bubble dance? Show me your bubble dance. See kids, look, we have the sizzle dance. Get in close, honey. You see the bubbling away? That's what you want in your pot. It's simmering away nicely, nicely, nicely. Okay, so that's what you want. And here's the thing. How do I know when it's cooked? It's cooked when your carrots have softened. Okay, so that's gonna take probably about 20 minutes. Okay, I have to go out for an hour and I won't be back. Then let it simmer away for an hour. What are you laughing at? Who said what now? I can see when you read something that's funny. You have to tell me these things. Okay, here's my baked spud. Go on. These are hot, hot, hot. I'll throw these two over here. Oh my God, did we just make dinner in minutes? Yes. <laughs> What's wrong, Shani? What's he laughing at, does? Mary says smelling like, like Italy here. Beautiful. I love that. That's a compliment. What are you laughing about that? Mary, thank you. Okay, baked potato. It's really, really hot, kids, so get moms and dads to do this. Be careful. Look at that. What did you do to that? Oh, Dils, look, he looks like he's got a little head. It's a man. It's a man? That's very sexist. Although men do tend to have smaller heads, in fairness, because we have smaller brains, because we're not that smart. So, what have I done? I have done, kids, be careful, this is very hot, so watch what I'm doing, right? I can handle heat, you can't. Okay, so get your knife and make a big X right in the middle of it. Okay, now it's hot, I told you, so be careful. So now you get your clean tea towel, and you go into the four corners, like so, and you just, hoo -hoo, 
squeeze like so. And Mr. Potato Head opens up. Look at that. Boom. One baked potato. Perfect. I'm getting my reheated bolognese from last night. Show you're falling asleep, pants are great. Dills, get me yogurt and get me the uh, grated cheese. Beautiful, look at that. Simple baked potato. Keep focused on it, come into the potato, Shani. A little bit of natural yogurt, a little bit of creme fraiche, a little bit of anything like that. Here is idea number two. So a little bit of natural yogurt. This is why I want you making more bolognese. If you asked how long were the potatoes in the oven? Uh, do you know what they're gonna have? Potatoes, about an hour, anywhere from an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and 45 minutes, 180 degrees. No, the mozzarella cheese. Um, again, they normally take about an hour to an hour and a half. And a, a potato is fine if you overcook it by 10 minutes when you bake it. So you don't need to overly worry about it. There we are. Bolognese, creme fraiche, or fresh natural yogurt, baked spud. Ooh, always got to put a little bit of. Oh, look what I found. This is in the garden. This is everywhere at the moment. It's called a tree cornered leek. It's a member of the wild garlic family. Everything is edible, stem, flowers, everything. So keep an eye out for that. You'll see it along riverbanks. Uh, there's plenty of it around at the moment. It's all in, it's not the wild garlic that you hear people going on about. It's a member of the wild garlic family. There we go, a little bit of green. Look at that, always makes everything, ooh, ah, very, very fancy. Come from a normal dish to Michelin star dish. Dish number two. But I didn't cook it. That's why I want to make a more bolognese. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the last dish, shutting over to our pot one more time so people aren't worried. You see this? Perfect. Bubbly, bubbly. What's the, what was your bubble dance? This was Dill's bubble dance. He went like, bubble dance. I said, will you do that in front of everyone else? Was it? Bubble dance. Come on, you came up with it. Give us the bubble dance. You don't have to do the sizzle dance, but give us the bubble dance. <laughs> ready? Bubble dance. I think it's brilliant. Piece of genius. Okay. Stir your pot every 10 minutes or so, just give the pot a good old stir. Now, so what have we done? We've done our Cornish pasty, that's nearly ready. Uh, we've done our baked potato, that is ready. Let's have a look at our Cornish pasty. No, another minute. Chili con carne, I knew I was doing something else. Chili con carne. Uh, and apparently, there's a guy down in Cork whose nickname is Chili because he was con carne's son. That was his nickname. Con carne, chili con carne. It's very funny. Dave Butler told me that one. Rice. I cooked more rice two days ago because I knew I had bolognese in the freezer that I was going to take out to make this. Oh yeah. Perfect. Okay. Rice in your tub. We're only going to get it ready now to start off. Audrey asked how many days will this keep in the fridge if decided not to freeze it? It'll keep. Check your, so it's all depending on your mince. If it's good fresh mince, three, four days easily. Do not put it in your fridge until it has gone stone cold. Okay, because your fridges, everyone's fridges at home are a lot smaller. You put something very hot into the fridge, it brings down the temperature of all the other stuff. Okay, it brings up the temperature of all the other stuff. So make sure it's gone cold. Put a lid on that, let it cool down overnight and fridge it. Yeah, put it in the fridge the following morning. Salt, what have I got in there? Rice, salt, butter, pepper. Cover it with cling film, get ready for the microwave. Uh, clean food. Dills, you're in charge of reminding me. So I'm only showing you this while we're waiting for our bolognese to cook. Okay, just to give you a few different ideas. Most TV chefs would make about four or five episodes out of this kind of stuff. But I love you guys so much, there's no point finishing up that going, yeah, let that simmer away for half an hour. I want to show you why we're doing this. So I'm not putting this on yet, but I'm just getting it ready. Microwave. In. Ready. And now, Dills. We're gonna get ready with our little bit of chili. Chili con carne. Okay, so, and there's always one extra gun. Well, technically speaking, that's not really the recipe for a chili. If, if you make this and hand that to your husband or to your wife or to your kids and go, what are we having today? Chili con carne, trust me, they'll believe it's chili con carne. Claude okay. said you've been pinging 
for five minutes now. Did the mince go in? Go oh in? yeah. Oh, Was it that stuck? Uh, you've been pinging for five minutes. Yes, the meat, the mint is in. Okay, who said that? Oh shit! I thought we had oil down. Thought was a man down, Lils. <laughs> Kids, don't don't swear like me. I'm not going to swear. Clodagh, over here. Our mint is in. Everything should be in your pot now. And we're just mixy, mixy, mixy until the carrot is tender. That's when you know it's cooked. Okay, and you can leave it there simmering for about two hours, and it'll be perfect. What have we got in there, Lils? We're making chili. So, a little bit of butter, a little bit of oil. I've no heat on yet. We're gonna add in two chilies. Just another, ooh, Cornish pasty. The lads must check on that. Dills, you're supposed to be in charge of that. Gotcha, Cornish pasty. Thanks, Dills. Now, let me have one little look. Take, the, just in case we're not, another six or seven minutes. Okay, we're back. Spring onions. I should really think this stuff true. Uh, Dills, peel me two cloves of garlic. Our pot of bolognese, simmering, simmering, simmering. That's perfect. These are ideas for next week, the week after, and all that kind of stuff. Spring onion. I don't have a spring onion. Normal onion. I don't have a normal onion. No onion. It's simple, isn't it, Dills? How do you open this? How do you open There you are, peel the two down. Please. Okay, so spring onions. Nice little bit of a slice. Okay, beautiful. And we're gonna pop that in comme ça, like that. That's French, you understand. Big Prince fan I was in my day. Well, I still am. Okay, low, low heat, right? Really low heat. We've got a bit of onion in there. And our chili. We put in a green and a red one. Into my compost. You can throw in the seeds if you want. Okay, we're not overly spicy fanatics. We don't mind it, but there's no seeds in that one. The green one is a bit seedier. And the pit is actually very, very spicy. Kids, if you're touching chilies with your hands, don't put them anywhere near your face. they burn the hell out of your eyes. Okay, so be careful. Make sure you wash them well. What have we got in our pan? We have a little bit of spring onion. We have a little bit of butter. We have a little bit of oil. And we're gonna add in our chilies now. And by the time Dills is finished with the garlic, it might be another hour or two, but... We'll get there. We'll get there. There was never a rush, Dills, sure there's not. Nope. Well, not like we can do anything. Yeah. Now, a lot of you are wondering, where's my glass of grape juice? I am currently in phase three of isolation because I did phase one for so much. So I'm going into detox with my isolation. So I'm trying to be good. I'm out running, not doing very well, but I'm trying. Because I have a funny feeling we'll be back up. Oh, what are you doing? Did you get there? Exit, back in the knife. Back in the knife. Okay, with our little bit of garlic. This is just another simple idea as to why we're making so much bolognese. Here, come here, the love of them. God, peel a clove of garlic. Now, two cloves of garlic. And we just want to basically soften that down. We're now making chili, chili, chili with the same pot of bolognese that we made today that's been in the freezer for the last two months because we forgot about it. We've taken it out. So we're just softening that down. Season, a little bit of salt and pepper. Beautiful. Our bolognese is already seasoned. Uh, 11 twists of the peppermint. I want to go chili, chili. I've got chili flakes. I don't have chili flakes with it. Don't put any chili flakes in. If you do, throw in a few. Beautiful. How are we all doing, guys? Come over and look at our pot, shall we? Let's see how we're looking. It's still simmering away. Bubbling away. That's absolutely perfect. Taste one of your carrots. Try one of your carrots now, guys. How are they looking? I know that's still a little bit hard. Ooh, and still a bit hot. There's actually not a million miles off it. It's about, I just have to warn the kids, don't put chili near your mouth when you pick it with your hands. What do I do? That's one spicy carrot. That's a spicy chili, boys. Okay, so we're not a million miles off it. Kidney beans. We're putting that into our chili. I don't care who tells you not to, always rinse these beans out from the can. Always rinse them out. Because you just, you don't want that gunk in it. 
So there's a little bit of rinse. Nothing wrong with it, but it's just, you want it nice and clean. Dills, you're in charge. Give my little shiny go over to the pan there now. Give that little shaky shaky. Dills, a little stir here, thing over here. Ooh, my man. Fierce fancy. Here. Do a little shake around with that before it ends up on the floor. If you've been watching us, you know Dills has a tendency. Don't you, Dills? Dills is my trusty sous chef. How's everybody bolognese? Let me know. Is yours cooked, guys? How's that looking? Fantastic. Now, here is a perfect example of what I'm telling you about as to why a pot of bolognese is brilliant. I've just opened up a tin of kidney beans. I'm only making chili con carne for one or two people, so I'm putting in a few. Oh, what am I going to do with all these beans I've left? That's what I'm going to do. They're going into my bolognese. That's why it's absolutely an amazing dish. Here is a little bit of defrosted mince from last night. Beautiful. So your bolognese, guys, is probably not a million miles off being cooked already. Let me know how it's looking. Let me know how you're getting on. Now, give me, give me one second, leave it there for a sec so it gets nice and hot. Okay, actually, you know what we're gonna add into that, lads? A little bit of sweet chili sauce. Why not? Love it, love it. Do I have sweet chili sauce? I do. Now, just a little bit of sweet chili sauce. You can add in a little bit of gravy into that as well if you want. You can add in a bit of soy sauce. Add in anything you want, guys, okay? It's just, it's a different dinner. Now, Shawnee, pay attention. When our mince is, it must be stone cold. I mean completely cold, cold, right? So tomorrow morning stuff, okay? You're gonna take your pot. Hang on, let me just get that little shaky, shaky. You're gonna take your pot. You're gonna take a ladle. You're gonna put three pits of, ladle of, of bolognese in it. Wrap it up, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it until you get something like this. Rossi said, Dylan, tell your assistant to stop talking. Say what? Rossi said, Dylan, tell your assistant to stop talking. Rossi, welcome to Facebook, my very good friend, Rossi. It only took you about 40 years to get here. There's my, listen, listen, listen. That's my frozen bolognese, okay? That's why we're doing it. Let it go completely stone cold, wrap it up, or use a freezer bag or into a plastic container, lid on, wrap it up, freeze it. Monday morning, oh God, pain in the ass to cook today. Take that out. It's defrosted by Monday night. And then you can do any of these dishes that I'm showing you. Now, that's the method to my man. Still two minutes for our rice. Go on. Now, come over to the pot, Shawnee, look. Sorry to wake you up there, Sean. See the way we're bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. That is absolutely perfect. I'm just gonna mince in my kidney beans. If you've made spaghetti to go with that, if you've made uh, penne pasta to go with that, absolutely perfect. Don't be afraid to taste it as well now, guys. Taste it, are you happy with it? Does it need a bit more salt? Does it need a bit more pepper? No problems. Then add it in. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Beautiful. How simple was it? So we've just, our base is made, the bolognese is made. We've now turned it into a chili con carne. But while we're waiting on that to heat and on the rice, rice to heat, hi guys, testing going on and loving it. Excellent, James. Great ideas, Margaret, or Paul. Thank you, Margaret. Hello from Missouri, USA. Hello, Sharon. Uh, check the oven. Maxine, would you believe that's exactly where I'm going? So, I see Maxine's on the same wavelength. I love it. Look at this. Don't pick up a hot pan with a wet cloth, and what do I do? Double it up, double it up. Look at this, you all think I'm mad. It's everyone else who's mad. I'm the only sane one here. One beautiful Cornish pasty. Not only that, what did we put it on, Dills? Why would we do that, Dills? No, We've got no washing up, look. Oh my god. This is 
saving my life with cooking and also washing up. Ta-da! Another one, Nils. Another one. Done. What can I serve with that Cornish pasty? I don't know. Maybe a bit of salad. Maybe a bit of coleslaw. Maybe a few chips. Whatever you want. Your man from Cork, Chili Con Carney, is loving the look of this, guys. It looks fantastic. Cut up your... I can hear somebody saying, Cut up that pie quick. I don't believe you. It's done. Do we keep... Do we keep... Like, I mean, everything is working perfectly. Jesus Christ. We don't need editors, Mike. Look at that. Woohoo! Hot, hot, hot. Look at that. Johnny, get a good blast into that. Let me look. Oh, my Lord. Look at my little spud sitting there. My potato. Everything. All in the one dish. Dills is nearly trying to go. It's going to be getting upsetting. They're going to have to get used to it, Dills, because one day we're gone and we're gone forever. Yep. But not yet. Chili. Beautiful. Dirty plate. Turn off the heat. Perfect. The whole reason I want to show you how to do a bolognese is so that you see how to cook more and that it saves your ass so many times for cooking throughout the rest of the week, the rest of the month. If you're like me, you forget it's in the freezer for six months. Evine wants to know what type of past pastry. That's puff pastry. But if you can't get it, short crust pastry. But I love the puff pastry, it's lovely. Our rice, that was already cooked. Why do we cook more rice? So we can make a quick dish like this without cooking it again. A little bit of butter, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. There's a, all the health experts out there saying, but it's so dangerous reheating rice. Not if it's reheated right. They, yeah, they never say that about these bags of rice that you can buy and bang in the microwave. Nobody's ever worried about that. They just don't want you cooking. We're cooking, we're doing everything perfectly. Now, look at this. Dills, uh, go on, yeah? Dye said, when do I put the, on the pasta? Uh, about, well, you can throw it on now, Di. That mince will bubble away for another two hours and it'll be fine. So throw it on now if you want to throw it on now. Uh, now we throw in our little bit of rice. As the French say, ooh la la. That's more French for you, Dills. Mbappe. Mbappe, coming to Liverpool. Hopefully. Look at this. Oh my God, how do they make it look so lovely in a restaurant? A ladle into the middle. Oh my God. Oh my God, how does he do these things? Look at that. We've now made a lovely thing of rice. We've made our Cornish pasty. We've made our baked potato. Now we're getting our little bit of chili. I get a spoon, actually. Let me know, guys. Let me know. Let me know. Are you making these? Are these good ideas? Are you enjoying the crack? Let us know. Dills gets fierce upset if people don't tell him that they're enjoying the crack. Yep. Don't you? Yeah. You never sleep. You have to stay up for another hour or two playing PlayStation. Yeah. Look at this. Beautiful. Absolutely. Mother, if you're watching, come in. Dinner's about to be served. Do you know what we put on that, Dills? Put a little bit of yogurt. I know a little bit of yogurt. Because why would you put yogurt or creme fraiche on that? Spicy and nicey. Okay, so this cools down the spiciness. So that's why we put a little bit of yogurt or a little bit of creme fraiche. Right on top. Guys, don't get upset, but we're nearly done. We're literally gonna have one more look at our pot. There we go. Oh, a little bit of yogurt. We've got our Shawnee, show them the baked spud. We have got our baked potato. We have got our Cornish pasty that you can serve with a bit of coleslaw or a bit of anything you want. We've got our little chili. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. I've made a right mess tonight, guys. I'm after making three or four different dishes there for you. And the last thing, guys, I know my bolognese is cooked. So stay where you are, Shani. I'm going to bring it over. Turn off my ovens, turn off everything. We did that in an hour and ten minutes. Mother of God, we cooked a massive pot of bolognese and we cooked three different dinners as well. Look, look at that for an absolute thing of beauty. If you want, somebody's out there saying, mine is really liquidy, there's way too much juice in it. Just keep simmering it away, drop it down to maybe one or two and let it reduce for about another hour. It'll do nothing to the veg, it'll do nothing to the meat, it'll just evaporate the liquid. Actually, I'd probably put that on for about another 10, 15 minutes or so. Let it go 100% cold, okay? Put the lid on it, leave it overnight, 
So leave it without the lid for the next hour or two while you're up. Then tonight, put the lid on it so no little four-legged creatures jump in or flies jump in. Let it go completely cold. Unless you've got a huge, big fridge, you can throw it into the fridge at the end of the night. Then freeze it tomorrow. Take whatever you want out of it tonight and hopefully at some stage, next week, next month, in the next three months, you'll make one of those dishes. Dills, I gotta admit, I know you did bugger all. I'd be last with him. I'd be last with him, me dills. I'd be last with him, me little dills. I can't hug my teenager because he'd be like, Dad, just, just, just so no TikTok. You can't be TikTok. Right? <laughs> okay. Lads, what a, we have a good few people watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Will you explain later on when and how to freeze? Yeah, just done it there now, Dahi. You have the man, yeah. We're about 30 <laughs> seconds behind before the comes. How can I calm down my spice in the bolognese? Just a little bit too strong for my liking or for my two-year-old granddaughter. Put a little bit of yogurt with it. So when you're serving it, just put a little bit of yogurt or creme fraiche and that cools it all the way down. It's a great little tip. Uh, Gina, I hope that helps. Uh, flavor a bit acidy, just a little bit. Clota, uh, did we put in anything acidy? What did we put in acidy? Uh, you just taste it. Might, might need a little bit of salt. Uh, maybe another bit of mixed herbs or something like that. I don't think we put in anything. We didn't put in any. Um, Steve Bird, great job. Thanks a million, Steve. Uh, thank you so much, Deirdre. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, so, guys, look. I know it's good for you. Mine looks better. I hope it does, Mary. If you're watching everything we're doing, see, I have to talk and this and then wash up and clean. You just have to sit at home and cook and look wonderful. You, 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 like, you do it much easier than I can ever do. Brilliant job. Thank you, Alison. Brilliant. Thank you, Mary. Um, that was. What was your funny feelings you had? Who had funny feelings? What? Did you have funny feelings? <laughs> you might have caught me in the middle of my bubble dance. I'm not too sure. Uh, do we do home deliveries? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, call down. We have a big pot of it now. You're more than welcome to come down. Uh, Leah and Dylan O'Connor in Carisavine love making the, fa the family dinner uh, yet again. Thanks a million, Deirdre. Leah and Dylan. Thank you guys for joining. I'm telling you lads, you're all going to be superstar cooks. There's a generation of morons out there. I won't dare name them, we get fierce upset. You know those people do, you get very upset about all kinds of things. They couldn't have a sugar, yeah, throw in a bit of sugar, Gronya, yeah, if you want to calm down the, the what do you call it, the, the spice. You kids are going to grow up and be geniuses in the kitchen, okay? Because we've had about six or eight weeks of learning how to cook simple, simple dishes. So you're never going to be stuck and you're never going to starve. And trust me, guys and girls, if you want to get that guy or girl of your dreams, Dills, make sure you know how to cook for them. Okay, uh, you said you did, or oh, that I had my funny feelings. What did I have? I have a funny feel. Oh, I think I said I had a funny. Oh yeah, I have a funny feeling. <laughs> right now I know. Sorry, <laughs> Billy Collie. I have a funny feeling we might just be opening back up a little sooner than hopefully was planned. So hopefully we're not going to be. Uh, nice job from Rossi. Thanks, Rosso. Uh, hope all the girls are good, Rossi. Terry enjoyed this, Audrey. Well, thank you so much for joining in. We'll be back, Audrey. Thank you. Thank you. Because if you didn't come back, we'd only be talking to ourselves. We'll never buy jars of sauce. I don't understand why people buy jars of bolognese sauce. I do. Okay, but sometimes it is a convenience. But when you make a big batch like this, the lads are starving at the same time. Just shut up so we can eat. But you have to answer them. You have to talk to people. They're, they've gone to the trouble of watching us. We have to go to the trouble of talking to them. Well, none of these other TV chefs do this. They're gone and they're off counting their cash or something like that. We're here having a laugh. Uh, yeah, I understand convenience and all that kind of stuff. But this now shows you when you have two hours in the week, you've made enough dinner there for 20, 30 people at least. Just joining in, Anne. <laughs> Don't worry, Anne. We're only waiting for you. Okay, guys. Is everybody ready? We just need to peel our onions. And I hate to tell you, but we've cooked enough bolognese for 20 people and three dinners already. But you can watch it back. Uh, you've been so good getting the kids interested, I hope. Mary, I just hope they love it. Um, was to leave for Ireland on Friday, but not happening, so watching you guys uh, helps. Great, Sharon. Well, thanks, Mary. Uh, Joanna Gilligan, will definitely make the Cornish pasties. I tell you, they're fantastic. Anyway, guys, the guys are hungry. I hope we've showed you how to make a perfect bolognese. I hope we've given you a couple of ideas what to do with it all. I hope it's going to make your life so much easier that you don't need to be cooking, cooking, yet you're still eating beautiful, fresh food. And Dills, I think, I think we did okay tonight. We're thinking of doing Chinese. I think of doing something Chinesey next time. I don't know. Sean's gone, oh Jesus, Dad, please do not say this on the tip of your tongue. My son knows me very well. We might make the old Wuhan stir fry or something like that. Let's see if I can find a, you know, there's a couple of bats around here. I'm only kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. Uh, well, you never know if I catch a bat. 
We nearly had that's, we nearly had dolphin bolognese. We anyone watch us last night? We were out kayaking. <laughs> Frank, by the way, Frank, if you're watching tonight, did you hear Frank? You're breaking the law. We're not breaking the law, Frank. We weren't even five hundred meters away from our home. We weren't breaking the law before the cops pull in and say, "I heard you were breaking the law last night." We weren't. This is where Sean, like my director, says, "Dad, shut up! You've done a great job. Shut up!" <laughs> Like, stop talking. Is that what he goes on, Jills? <coughs> yeah, stop talking. Okay, I'll stop talking. Bolognese, uh, chili con carne from Cork, a lovely Cornish pasty, beautiful baked potato. Dills, knock it out of the park, buddy. What do you say? It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Enjoy your dinner, guys. We will be back Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, we're not too sure. Keep an eye on the page. Hit the notifications. When I post, make sure you know about it. But we'll be back soon. We do another dish. Good night.